Scoop Talk, Dustin DePirac, Hugh Kelmer, here coming to you from uh, some sort of atrium, atrium, sun decky thing. There's a bunch of flags. Yeah, there's some flags. There's a skylight. Yep. That's providing its natural light. Mm. This is what high schools look like now, apparently. This whole this room might be a well. I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I I went to a really new high school, so this is not totally. Yeah, this is foreign for me completely. But we didn't say what high school we're at. Uh, We're We're Lawrence Central. Central. Um, so that's why we're talking to you, because Jeremy Hollow just committed to Indiana. It's Indiana. Enter the Indi- Ninja Five. <laughs> Hollow winning. <laughs> Jeremania. All of these things. Just All of these things. Uh, Jeremy mm. Hollowell uh, joins Indiana's class of 2012. He's the fifth member mm. uh, joining in order. Uh, Ron Patterson. No, Jerkin was first. Was Jerkin first? Jerkin was first. Peter Jerkin. Or was Ron- it? No, Ron was first. Oh, uh, okay. No, Ron was, Ron was first. Yeah, Ron, Ron was first. first. Ron Patterson, Peter Jerkin, Hunter Perea, Yogi Ferrell, now Jeremy Hollowell. Yeah. They, they can literally now play a basketball game. They can't by themselves. <laughs> In theory, it's a Fab Five thing. They want to go They want to go more. They yeah, they're, they're calling themselves clear. a Super Six, uh, which they came up with on their own, actually. Mm-hmm. I think they all watched the Fab Five documentary and go, look, we can do that. Yeah. It was like, a, it was like suddenly like it dawned on them what the mm-hmm. Fab Five were. And, right, exactly. Which is weird because like, we remember that vividly. Right. But they apparently don't. They, I mean, they were. Mm-hmm. Think about it. Uh, Jeremy mm-hmm. Hollowell was 16. Yeah. Uh, so he was born over that make 86. So he was six when that team mm-hmm. went to the national championship game. Yeah. He has no firm reference. No, none whatsoever. Um, any, anyways, the Super Six, uh, if he gets, they get Gary Harris. Uh, they're attacking it. Uh, they're, and they're Hollowell made it very clear he was Tom, asked, Tom Green wants Gary Harris, it? and they all the rest of them also want yeah. Gary Harris. So Gary's going to be sick of everyone uh-huh. very soon. Like, Jared, Jeremy made it clear. It's like, yeah, Gary knows I'm going to come after him pretty hard. Right. So basically it's like now they've got all five of them, plus Austin Etherington's still in the game at least until – well, Austin Etherington's still in the game. You know, he recruits yeah. everybody. That's what the man Austin's. does. Austin's. Um, and uh, Cody might make a call, maybe. I wonder maybe. if Cody gets into that. I don't know if uh, he's – Cody doesn't make a call. But it, Cody's like the godfather. He, Cody just kind of nods. At, you bring him at the end and Cody's yeah. like – you coming? Is it? Mm-hmm. He doesn't. He doesn't call you after that. He doesn't tweet at you right. or anything like that. Right. Gary will be nods. at Conseco Fieldhouse on Saturday, and Cody will mm-hmm. come come out for warm ups and just nod and go. <laughs> and Gary, yeah. like, I'm in. Okay. I'm okay. In. Done. Done. Let's, uh, let's banner up. Yeah. So that so that few interesting you know points to talk about there. The fact that first off he did just jump into that and he was fully aware that his responsibility is now Gary Harris. A um, yeah. couple of other interesting points. He was asked, you know, how do you think you fit with this group? When, mm-hmm. How do you fit with this offense? And uh, he said that, that Kareem told him he reminds him of Christian Wofford, which um, was interesting. For, I mean, uh, Christian for did lose. Right, right, right. I mean, Christian gets a bad rap, and, and mm-hmm. for some good reasons. Um, right. He could go harder. Mm-hmm. Um, he does struggle with consistency. But I, but I think they are very similar yeah. players. I think that's They're, a really good comparison. The, the, the thing about it is I think, like, in both ways, like – you would be happy if if Hollowell has Watford's ceiling, and you're concerned if he has Watford's floor. I guess yeah. is sort of the thing. Like you, you, you're worried about them. You, you're excited about them for the same reasons that you're. Well, no, you're excited about them for the same reasons, and you're worried about them for the same reasons. Uh, Hollowell is like, like like Watford is one of those guys who everyone tells you they're working hard, and you're watching them, you, but you wonder. They don't. Uh, they don't look like they're Jack to be there. You know right. I mean? like they don't, right. They don't. Right. They don't really. They, they don't show it. Even, you, you even today, the, like Jeremy wasn't really like really overjoyed and, no. and effusive and emotional. He yeah. was kind of like, I'm, I'm gonna go to Indiana. Right. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. Like that is just kind of his personality. Right. Exactly. No, so I mean, he's not. He, he's not the type. Like he, he's just not excitable. Yeah. You know. He's, That's fair. And, and, yeah. and Watford's kind of similar. Watford's a little bit more kind of engaging, but as I said before about Watford, Watford, you know, makes me think of uh, uh, easy, easy like Sunday morning. He's just kind of, you know, moving along and, you know, taking it easy. Hollowell has a, yeah. kind of a similar uh, disposition, but he also has the sort of skills, you know, the, the multidimensional skills. He's a guy that can post up a 6'7". Six, six, uh, he's also a guy that can shoot a lot of threes. Basically, he needs to work on his handle. That's what Coach uh, J.R. Shell has said a few times about him. Uh, but he can also defend. Um, better than I think a lot of people would realize. He's got a lot of length, and he, he cares about it. Apparently, just talking to J.R. Shell, he just said that you know he, he's the type of guy that will call out, you know, will say, I want to defend that guy. Whoever it is that's beating us, I want to defend him. And, uh, apparently, among those guys in that list, when they played Pike, he wanted Marcus Teague. 
uh, and six seven guy right. doesn't tend to cover Marcus T, but apparently they did a pretty good job on it. I didn't see that game. Um, and 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 remember that this was also you know and, and this is an Indiana team this year uh, where Tom Crean after one game said that there was only one guy that wanted to guard the guy that was and I think I think it was yeah. Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, it was. I be, I'm almost sure it was Wisconsin. It was Wisconsin and John said, I want to. No, it would have been Taylor. Because they, they shut down John Moore. Yeah. If it wasn't that, it was Ohio State. And Diebler. No. But no. I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty it was. Sure it, it was I, I forget the particulars. Woke. It was a home game, and I think it was after Taylor went off for 39. Yeah. I think. Maybe. I'm not mistaken. I forget. Anyway, yeah. the particular was Will Sheehy was the only guy that, that came to the coaching staff and said, I want that guy. Give me the Give chance. Me that guy. Yeah. And Tom Crean loves that. He exactly. wants those guys and so Jeremy Hollowell for you know the disposition the attitude or whatever else you, yeah. you can kind of read off the surface there, are, there are examples of, that there are examples of be him being that guy yeah um, and, and also I think it also Christian Watford right now is the guy most counted on in that class yeah uh, Jeremy is the number three recruit in the class of 2012 in terms of ranking yeah Yogi and Hunter are both ahead of him. And yeah. In terms of importance, because Hunter is a super athletic, power forward, big man, and right. Yogi's a point guard. Yeah, which they need desperately. Um, you know, so I think Jeremy is – he's the world – the way of the world is not going to be on his shoulders. No. Um, I, I think him and Ron are going to be in the position of they're going to fight for playing time. Yeah. Uh, they're going to fight to try to start, but they may just be rotation yeah. guys that first year. And they'll still, still have a lot of wings left at that point. They will. You they know, will. either at least Etherington, you got to figure at least Etherington, Ola Depot, she plus Creek, plus Watford will be a senior if, you know, provided all of them stay, stay healthy. Right, plus if Yogi's playing point guard, Holes is a two guard. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's all kinds of, there's, there's all kinds of, of reasons why. There are things to figure be, out. Yeah, there's a lot of things to figure out, which is a nice next segue because this is really the first one where you were like, okay, like, it's not so much that they didn't desperately need this one. I mean, they needed a, they needed a scoring wing, I think. Really they needed they needed a scoring wing. Never going to be a right. You know, score get me fifteen to twenty a no, game type guy. He's not that guy. Uh, so now you're officially in the all right. What do we do next thing? And, and there's going to be there's going to be some costs. However, they go from here. This officially puts them. I believe they are one over for, for 2012. Right at this very it, moment, it, it, they they are it, even if they don't um, with the current makeup of the roster. Uh, they have 12 guys right now. Yeah. Um, they're losing three. They're bringing in five. So, yes, they are oversigned right now. Yeah. And that's before they bring in any more for 2011. Which they're still obviously talking about. I, th- I think they're going to bring in one guy. Yeah. I think that's um, what, they, what ends up happening. They get either a point or a big instead of both. Right. And then you get into a situation where our guys are going to transfer. Yeah. Um, they're either going to be encouraged or they're going to look at the situation and go, mm-hmm. you know what, I just don't see a situation in which – yeah. I'm allowed, or I'm, I'm put in a position where I can get playing time. It becomes an interesting situation now because it's the the more you the more you add from this point on, the more you're kind of chipping into bone. So it's like okay, like if you get yeah. if you get another player in eleven, if you get another big man in eleven, and then you get Harris, which obviously I mean they would they move would, heaven and earth to get Harris. Yeah. Uh, you're still you're now looking at guys that everybody and I, and I think they would I I, 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 and I think somebody like Mitch McGarry, a real banger mm-hmm. post guy, that would also yeah, that's another guy they would look for. So you're looking at you got to move some things around. I mean, even if you look at the guys who aren't playing very much right now, uh, that's still not enough. Yeah. You know, you you now have to get to the point that you're you're going after guys that are rotation guys now, or generally, you know, that the fan base and the team in general, the program is generally pleased with, might have a hard time finding a home by 2012. Yeah, not, and, not have a hard right. time finding home. So I mean, though, if, if, no, if they but, go elsewhere, and, and right, and, the, and there are guys that you can look at and just and, and maybe they look at it and realize, you know, yeah, like, this is too much to have to compete with. There's, right, like yeah. I, I want to get to the NBA, and yeah. I is this, or really even I won't, and I just feel like I want to play college ball. And right, I want to sit here like I'm good enough to not just be playing. I don't, want, I don't want to be game. right. I don't want to be playing, tr- fighting for 12 minutes a game. Right. Yeah. Uh, with some freshmen, I yeah. want to be probably somewhere gonna be, where I, I know mean, I'm going to be starting. At some point, there's uh, one of the wings is probably going to have to yeah. end up elsewhere, which is yeah. tough because all of them have have contributed. I mean, you would the, be, the best possible situation is the light bulb turns on for Christian, he becomes yeah. an absolute force all next season, and leaves from the NBA. Right, exactly. That would that is the make, absolute make best life. situation. Yeah, yeah, probably. And on on top of that, you know, Creek. 
getting healthy and everything else like that. Right. I mean, there's there a lot of things could get the, you know, th and there's a lot of time. Obviously, these guys don't come on campus till 2012. There's a lot of times to move things around, but this is right at the point where you're looking at some tough decisions yeah. for everybody. That's guys, I know. mean. It, it's, but of it's, course a good, it's a good moment. It's, yeah. a, it's a happy moment if you're the Indiana coaching staff. It's still a good, and it's a better uh, problem to have. It's a better, it's a better problem. You're exactly right. It's yeah. a better problem than have, than picking to have up. too much talent than have no talent. Yeah. To have to, to worry about who can I keep out of this list of talented guys as opposed to how do I get five reasonably coordinated human beings to play basketball, you know, that's, to wear the uniform. So that's that's, that's how far they come. It does say a lot. This. This is an impressive class already. If if they do, you know, pull all their collective efforts and they do convince Gary Harris that this is a place he wants to go, that's a special class. That's a really special class. It is. It is. Super so. six. Super six. All right, everybody. The ninja movement. Thanks for watching. Thanks.